to a mentor of mine, who was a teacher of mine in directing, um, who taught me three things, sensibility, sensitivity, and temperament as the requirement of a person in theater. And sure, sure enough, we had all three, Ben Cervantes. Can you hear me well? Yes. Thank you. Now, to prolong my lecture on today, on ritual meaning, and mental language, memory, uh, I have a quiz. And I promise you will write your name here and I'll give you a prize, a film book, and, or a theater book. I will send it to you. If you the first one who answers. <laughs> If a group of deer is called a herd, a group of zebras is called a zeal, a group of lions is called a pride, what then do you call a group of baboons? <laughs> Wonderful. Congress, of course. The Congress. Of we would call them the Congress of Pigs. But then, what would we call the Senate? So that Pigs is reserved for Senate. A Senate of Pigs. But poor natural and authentic Babylons and Pigs, the victims of language transformation, we downgraded in meaning to signify the venerable group of corrupt swindlers and thieves of our people and poor nation who elect them idiotically in the first place for many reasons, the most important of which is the inability to recognize the transformation of meanings or the inability to look at the historical references of the word vote. The candidate to them at election time or in the executive offices the signifier, servant of the nation, becomes its very self-same meaning, thief. So that is my introduction to today's lecture. How you will connect it will be your problem of memory and history. My lecture today is on ritual, irony, and the vision of humanity. I would like to create a proposition for an aesthetics of drama. Let us begin with the cave of prehistoric man. We see carved into the cave walls a story, the story of the hunt. We see a bull etched on a massive part of the rock to create a three-dimensional effect. That was their way of expressing 3D. And no, they didn't need the digital technology of today. All they needed was to look at the shape of the cave. So, the bull exists as a drawing on a massive part of the cave that juts out so that it can form the body of it. Around the bull are etched hunters in linear form, very much like how a child would draw a man in stick drawing holding bows and arrows, poised for the shoot. Some arrows drawn midway between the hunter and bull in suspended moment before it reaches the target. In front of the bull is a warrior shooting an arrow straight for the target between the bull's eyes. On the cave wall, we see a stick down of lines indicating in fives the way we used to count on the ground when we used to play people or they used to play. Go one, two, three, four, and then five. And then one, two, three, four, five. There is a part in the cave where you can count 13. And this is the story of the hunt as dramatized in figurative etching and paintings on the walls of the cave in Lascaux, France, in Altamira, and other caves of the world. I begin with this because here we see an example of a performance revisualized for us by primitive man, narrated in an expression of man's triumph over the beast, in man's recognition of himself as a mortal but triumphant man. So why did you do this? I'm sure that you can help me answer the question. 
to repeat what he did in order for the tribe to remember the story. In which case, remembrance is crucial to the creation of a tradition. Yes? Number two.
for uh, drama students, for, for, for great writing students, that many times when we write, yes, we rehearse our writing. We, we begin to rehearse a rhythm, a pulse of writing as we write. Writing is not only writing for the purpose of finishing that product, and this is where we see it, that it is that the art and craft of writing, of documenting, of creating works of art, are part of the process of becoming better. It is a rehearsal for the next, or after all, we're only as good as your last. <coughs> to show, and this is very important, who is the hero. So, who is the hero in this grouping where there's a bull and then there's this hero, there are, there are these warriors all around. Now, who would be the hero, the leading, the, the man that, let's say, Cesar Montano would play or something like that, and not Daniel Tati. You know what I'm saying? As one as opposed to the other. Maybe later on. Who would be the hero in the grouping of a circle? If the bull is facing this way, there's a warrior here, warrior there, warrior, warrior, warrior. The one directly facing the bull. The bull is charged. But of course, there will be myths about this hero because his hero, his arrow was so fast. And why was it so fast? Why did he catch so many fools? Why is he so afraid? It's because this handsome man one day went to the river straight. <laughs> he sweat listening in the sun, jumped into the river, swam, perched on a tree, a bird from somewhere, watched the swimming dark sky. Muscled, sensuous body. And suddenly, the bird transforms into a woman, half bird, half woman. So they meet. The woman says, I will pluck feathers that you will attach to the fledgling of your arrow. And it will become the fastest arrow that will hit and kill any animal. And so that explains it. Of course, it was a myth. As myths are there to explain what are the everyday realities that we cannot explain. But this, this um, myth of celestial maiden, maidens and, and sky maidens and half birds, half women are are found all over the world, of course, in different kinds of characters. Yes. Um, some are some are half bird, half women who eat up the phalluses of men. Some are half bird, half what are you laughing? But it's true, there are half bird, half half bird, half women who eat up phalluses of men in the morning. <laughs> they don't need to be long and have wings. <laughs> and then there are, of course, half bird, half women who help the community. There are half bird, half women who are tragic, fall in love with a warrior, and end up as women, no longer as half bird, half women. They can't fly to the sky anymore. Yeah. And there are half bird, half women who eat up the babies like harpies and snatch them from you. All kinds of half bird, half women myths later on become a source of explanations of everyday realities. So, in relation to later works in the visual arts, this scape drawings may appear crude and childlike, but this is a representation of the unlearned savage eye wishing to imitate life. And this is the portal to the meaning of aesthetics. Why is that? Why is it that one delights in seeing the cave drawings and appreciate them as a beautiful piece of art. What makes us delight in it? 
I think the main reason for this is that it has an intention as a word, and the intention is noble, and that it achieves a level of speaking the truth, of being a mirror to life, or representing the values of a group of people that will speak of their lives in a truthful and noble way. It is also a noble act, because it is meant to teach and entertain at the same time, making us delight in the fact that the bull is represented in a bulging rock to represent the weight and mass of the bull. These elements become the seed to the principal elements of aesthetics, or our judgment of what is beautiful or what is ugly, in the transfer from memory or idea into a concrete word of art or performance. It is in this process of transfer from concept to actual performance, and here, performance means how the concept is reenacted in concrete shape and form. Sound or word, beat or rhythm, expression and language in space, be that of rock, wood, stone, canvas, or in the medium of the human being itself, in which case we move into the realm of theater. For the story of the cave did not end there. Let us go back to the moment. It is night and the moon scatters patches of light to the leaves of the village ground. And in the center of the tribal grounds, where an arena has been prepared with some levels of rocks, the moon throws its amber light. One by one, the tribe gathers round with long and short wooden trunks and branches hollowed out. When the tribe is gathered round, the drum players start beating with stone or wood, their wooden drums made from the bark and skin of trees and animals. A tribe member, all painted in dying blood in the face, with his head bedecked with feathers and beads and the horns of an elk, chants in rise and fall of sound and some clicking sounds of the tongue. Or like this in a wood wood. Have you, have you heard the wood wood? Because I say, I, and this is the kind of pattern. And no, 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 there's always a kind of a pattern, you know, a, a, an accent at the end that creates later on for a form of a narrative. So it's not just the chant now, it becomes a line. It develops, the chant develops into a verse. Or vice versa, the verse develops into a chant. And on this night, the hunt is going to be replayed, this time in live performance by some men of the tribe who would now play the role of the hunter and the hunted. Of course, the one who would play the bull is not you. Is not you, Dominic. Maybe Puchik could. <laughs> Maybe Fernando here can, Nico can. Yeah. But the deer will be played by somebody leave, right? Yeah. And the shaman, of course, the leader, the one who chants, is not someone who will chant. No, there's no voice. There is no voice. It must be a voice that has power, it has vocal energy that will fill up the space. And so the drums, the roll, the warriors all painted, coming and dancing at the same steps and stepping in rhythmic time. This is beautiful because the drums are agitating them but they are in control with each one being in synchrony, being together, each one giving himself to the ensemble. This is important because there is unity, a synchrony and a discipline. If, if they were otherwise, they would not be able to kill the bull, right? Then they build the rhythm of the dance, becoming faster and faster, and then they fall quiet. They run out with the audience and hide behind the tree, trees. The drums grow quiet, but still create the beat, and your heart seems to beat louder than the drums. You are excited because something will happen in the sudden change of contrast. There is suspense in the air. And then suddenly, the cry of the bull, the sound that somehow sounds like a bull is there. The women the youth huddle in expectation. Out of the darkness comes running into the arena, leaping and wild in its hind legs is a bull. Four actors dressed in the hind and the front actor with a bull mask come in dancing. 
Two actors underneath the hide and the bull's mass made from bent wood and eye, held strong by the hands of the dancer and actors underneath. Again, their feet are synchronized with the contrast of the steps of four feet. Left front stop and right back stop and then left front stop and left back stop and then the turn around the arena creates a sand rising. It's wild rear suddenly rising and high legs kicking, head snorting close to the ground, right, left and round, snorting into the audience to scream and run from the circle in fright and delight, the children crying and the young men laughing. There is delight in this moment because this is the evil hope, because it looks and sounds so much as a real thing. Then the warriors come out again and they dance in a circle. The music stops, the feet of the warriors gliding softly, lest the bull hear them and the tribe is quiet. The bull is snorting, wildly sensing and runs straight into the audience and circles again. The warriors move in position. One of them follows the head of the bull, and the rest are poised to shoot the arrow. The warrior in front of the bull's head raises his bow, and the rest of the warriors follow suit. And the arrows fly. One arrow plants itself between the bull's eye. The bull falls, its head trying to rise, but drops, and its legs kick their last. How delightful to see how the bull dies, acted by the hind feet. The warrior cries to the skies in triumph, a cry that reaches beyond the tallest tree into the stars, and the drums beat high again, and the warrior stands in a circle. The man who before the dance painted in blood comes with the head of the bull and comes to the center, chants loud and commandingly clear with a deep voice, and stands of solemn quality. Solemn. He offers the head of the bull high up to the sky. The women prepare the pyre, and the head of the bull is placed on it. As the dance becomes more intense, and the men and women and children of tribe gathered round, join, stomping their feet in the synchrony with the drums, their hands and bodies moving from earth to sky, and earth to sky. Drama and theater begin with ritual. What is ritual? Born of a common aspiration. Its intent is to communicate a human aspiration to the forces higher and mightier than man, such as the forces of winds and nature, who are in turn controlled by some higher spirit. Ritual is an expression in an ordered form or sequence of actions agreed upon and accepted that symbolize and signify that human aspiration. Its process of symbolization are its actions meant to express a common human aspiration and is agreed upon by the community members of those who hold that aspiration true to their existence and sacred to their lives. This is the origin of drama and theater. The text is man's everyday life, everyday actions, everyday existence expressed in a nemesis, a representation or presentation, which are the two edges of style the pendulum of theater swings back and forth in history, placed in an order of signs and symbols whose meaning man intends and wills. Drama and theater began with need, with necessity, with everyday objective realities, and the mimesis of this need is the basis for all aesthetics of drama and theater. Within those objectives of presenting everyday needs are conflicts and choices he makes. Conflicts and choices without which there can be no drama nor theater. Man wants to survive, but man wants to dance. Man wants to continue, but. So in this con con constructs, um, which all of our theater practitioners always tell their actors, just think, I want to bond. So the idea of theme is erased. It's not just a theme, it's not just a noun. It is a verb, it is an action, and it is an opposing verb. I want to verb, but And in this context, there are obstacles and opposition.
conditions that present themselves. Man wants to survive, but the wage is so high, he is helpless, so has to prepare for higher ground. Man wants to dance, but now is the time for silence. So he falls in and reflects, and chooses to do so, because in reflection, there may, be, there may come out another rhythm, another step, another expression, a new one, not the one that has now been done again and again. Man wants to continue, but the beasts with horns, with truncheons, with bombs, with positions and powers, with the power to steal, are there to shut up his mouth. But he writes his words down to continue beyond his death. The way the drawings and the caves have been handed down from time to show us the true meaning of ritual and the continuity of man. Aesthetics are the sense of beauty or the sense of delight when the ordered balance and synchrony of expression and meaning are achieved grow from within. They are not a post set of rules. Rather, they are essences that first emanate from the sense of what is being expressed as a need and how it is expressed urgently. Although one can recognize certain general principles of aesthetics, both in the visual and performing arts, one must recognize that the attitudes towards such principles vary from community to community and from culture to culture. They are essences that derive from the people themselves and their ways of living. Their attitude towards environment, nature, space, the position of the man in the world, their view of life or the afterlife, rhythms of life and death, sounds and music in relation to the events in their lives, the construct of their social order, of power, of domination, and their common conflicts, their view of man and woman, and the wondrous creature that is neither man nor woman, yes, space and movement in space. But let us look at some universal principle of aesthetics that one can recuperate from the different artistic expressions in the form of relative oppositions. Note that I say relative because it's neither one nor the other. It's one side or one edge moving into the, or moving, shuffling, the tensions shuffling between the two edges. So, linear versus painterly, or linear, curvilinear, mass versus space. External space versus internal space. Up, Catholic versus down, heaven, hell, heaven, hell. Birth control, hell. Condom, hell. I couldn't believe it when, when there was a time when condoms here were bad. Well, because of the Catholic Church. So hypocritical. How many millions they spend, they, they get from sex traffic. You know that, no? Or you haven't read? Well, you should. Okay, can be gay? Come on, can you be gay? Be gay. Kasi hindi ka magsisindi ka ng kantila, isa para sa tatay mo, isa para sa nanay mo, isa para doon sa kapatid mo, nandun sa Pilipinas na nagka-college, isa para doon sa kamatay mo, isa para doon sa kamatay mo. Ang dami-dami na, one dollar, twenty-five per, per paper that you spend in Italy. No? All those migrant workers, lighting all those papers, nilaloko lang kayo. And then the gold that they hold. And then they come here. There's so much so many children, street children, who can't even eat, and they can't realize that there is such a thing as choice. There still is choice. But no, for them it's either up or down. Vertical versus lateral, light versus and toward shadow, color versus and toward shading, surging forward versus receding, sound versus silence, Singular versus plural. United, especially in narratives, versus dispersed. Linear time 
versus nonlinear time. Plenary consciousness versus monologic narrative and present versus absent. You look at yourself in the mirror, close your eyes, where are you? In the mirror or here? Where is your presence? One can categorize relatively to what certain expressions belong to in these comparisons, but the aesthetics of the expressions are contained within the deeper belief of the person or group of people expressing the word. So, what is beautiful and what is ugly? To the Japanese, a slow, slow walk. To the slow chant with drum accents, a walk with broad strokes on the clean, bare stage, with a simple bamboo hanging from the baton is a quintessence of beauty and yukon, meaning essence. But to the Broadway artist, and the resorts world. <laughs> ah. I did an opera there, the, the opera gala there. I had absolutely, according to them, used the stairs that they made. I had to use absolutely the steps that they that they made. Can you imagine? And why is there no upbeat rhythm? You know, so the Broadway is always that. It's always an upbeat, right? That's all. So you cannot go. Or you can't do as a Moscow art theater would do long day's journey tonight that would last from morning until midnight. Can't do that. It has to be like two hours, two hours of tea. That because of the aesthetic that they have in that particular culture. So the aesthetics of drama and theater always swing from presentational to the representational. Again, in relative comparisons. Some expressions are presentational, meaning closer to the symbolic expression, and some are representational, the expression of what one, one wants to convey from life tends to come towards its very similitude to life itself. As when they did Willam Sugat, I remember in the cultural center years ago, they used a real carabao on stage. There had to be a real carabao on stage. And then, but in presentational, in the ritual we just discussed above, the bull is presented as a mask with four dancers beneath a costume of animal skins. A woman holds a doll to represent a baby in representational, while a woman transforms her shawl or malo or sarong presentationally into a baby. So you can transform a malo into a baby, or you can, become, you can, you can even become a cradle. Or, you know what, sometimes, as you, you go to Marawi, it transforms into a motel. Especially when the, when the male and the female are joined within. So it becomes like, yes, all right. Or you can have a beautifully designed set with cherry trees, and the set executors must know what a cherry tree looks like and how are its leaves. I remember around the Pia when you did cherry orchard, every student had to create a cherry leaf. You know? And had to paste the cherry leaf into You had to create a cherry leaf. And of course, because it's very expensive, I remember um, to when, when he did La Traviata, it was very expensive to have a huge chandelier. He had a sh huge chandelier made out of big ballpens, and big ballpens were still transparent. So you got like crystal light, you know. From afar they looked like like hanging crystals. So and then when there is snow, the intent of showing the cold can become ironical. Now here in this back in the center studio, I was just imagining great performances. I remember we did bend. Right? And it's and I played Horst. Horst, sorry, Horst. What's his name? Horst. H-O-R-S-T is the name of the character. 
we're supposed to, you know, be like prisoners of war, and we're supposed to transfer uh, uh, stone from one end to the other, and then back again. It's supposed to be cold. I swear to you, I felt cold, and it was the height of summer, and I don't know why I, there was no sweat, but we were wearing, wearing fur coats, fake fur anyway. But somehow, believing that it was winter made you feel like it was winter and you would not sweat. It was very, very odd, and in fact, the trembling became so real. But then, of course, afterwards you go back and say, oh, it's wacky inside, it's real, and when it becomes, it becomes, when it becomes real again, the representation disappears. So an actor playing a farmer, oh, I got, I had a, a workshop in Canto Barrio, Canto Manion, in, in, in Negros Oriental, this boundary between Negros Oriental and Negros Occidental. I went there uh, in order to create help help create, or try to create a peace zone for the farmers who could not farm because they were caught between a conflict between the military and the NPAs. So they said, you cannot imagine this place is so far away, you have to, you know, catch a bus down for about six hours from Bacolod, and, uh, and then you get down, and then you ride the Carabao, and then uh, you go to the the ridge and then there's a river, you no longer ride the caravan, you ride the farmer. Farmer rock takes you to the other side, like St. Christopher, you know, and the Church of St. Christopher and the church and, and Christ, which no longer exists by the way. The Catholic Church has said that the, the myth of St. Christopher is, a, is, is not real. You just imagine. They can create or destroy saints anytime they want. Anyway. So and then this place I did a workshop for them for them to tell their stories on Carabao cards. So they move from one village to the other in order for them to tell these stories of what they experience, why they cannot farm because of the conflict. So this farmer takes one bamboo and then he cuts, does that to four pieces. Puts into a square and then he says, this is my land. He has marked his nation. He goes on to dramatize his plight, and what is actually going to develop is the irony of this statement. Yes, it is his land. He intends to make his land grow sugar that one day he can sell, but that what? That is what he intends for the good of his family and his community. But what he wants is not what a powerful one. So some other actors holding bamboo sticks like guns come to the square and as in a child's game flick out sticks high and hit hard the stick to drive it far from where it is. There is no farmer's land. It is now the land of the military or of the president himself. Luisita, Canto Baño, Negros, the play does not end there. Because one conflict leads to another. And the situations presented along with documentation lead to a reaction that is not only felt, but also leads to thinking. The objective of the performance is to encode what is happening for presentation to the United Nations that Canto Magno be declared a peace zone. Because of the advocacy of theater, that objective was reached by Canto Magno is now a peace zone. Theater becomes an expression beyond mimesis. It reaches the realm of social action in a community and in history.